All right, welcome to the Stereo 3D Toolkit version 3 tutorial. Uh, if you're watching this video, you've probably tried using the built-in stereo camera that comes with After Effects and noticed that it falls flat in a few key ways, um, especially if you're working with 3D plugins like Element or the Trap Code Suite. Well, you'll be happy to know that the Stereo 3D Toolkit version 3 fills that gap and allows you to create truly stereoscopic compositions, pre-compositions, and it also works with all your favorite 3D plugins like Element, Trap Code Suite, and all the rest. All right, so the first thing you'll want to do when you open After Effects is open up the script. Um, once you have it installed, it will be under the window menu down there at the bottom, and you can dock it anywhere you like in your UI. I'm just going to drop it here underneath the effects controls. So I've created a scene ahead of time using Video Copilot's Element plugin, which is a great way to create 3D content in After Effects. Uh, it's a really simple scene. I just have some text falling into place. I've got a wall behind it. I've got a light casting a shadow on that wall. Um, and I've got some really simple textures on the letters and the back wall. So having textures on your objects really helps with the 3D effect because it gives your eye a little something extra to latch onto as opposed to a totally smooth surface. All right, so once you have everything set up and you have a scene ready to make 3D, all you really need to do is click on the composition in the project tab and then click on the camera in your composition's timeline. Um, if you have multiple cameras, you know, you have to tell the script which one you want to use um, in your 3D scene. So once you have those items selected, go over to the Stereo 3D Toolkit and press New S3D and this will take your 2D composition and create a new folder with all of your stereoscopic 3D compositions. So inside of the S3D folder, you will see three compositions. You will have the underscore LF, underscore RT, underscore S3D. Now the script uses the names of your compositions in layers to kind of put everything together. So these names are actually very important. Um, LF is for the left channel. That's where you're going to be doing all of your work. RT is the right channel. And now these right channel compositions are automatically regenerated by the script each time you hit update S3D. So if you're working in your left channel and you notice things are, out, are not matching up anymore, like if you're adding layers, removing layers, changing effects, um, you'll need to run the update S3D command. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. And now the S3D comp is where you have your actual stereo preview. So this takes your your left and right channel comps, brings them together and uses the built-in 3D glasses effect to create a preview that you can look at while you're working. Um, and I have mine set to the classic red and blue glasses um, anaglyph settings um, because that's you know widely available. You don't need any special equipment other than some cheap glasses to get working. But if you do have a, uh, a better setup, you can use whatever monitor and glasses you have. It, We'll work with those. Um, but I'm just going to use Anaglyph for this tutorial. All right, so here's a quick look at the scene so far after creating our stereo 3D comp. Um, I'll just render a quick RAM preview. You can kind of see it as, it is, as it is at the beginning here. And there you go. Pretty good. Element 3D. Fully 3D as you would expect. All right, so before I jump into the left comp to take a look at what's going on there, I'm just going to lock this controls layer so it remains visible after I jump into the left-hand composition. All right, so let's take a look at the left composition. Um, this is where you're going to be doing pretty much all of your work. Um, you'll see there are actually three cameras in here. You have your left camera, your S3D camera, and your right camera. So the left camera is the one that's being used as the active camera in this scene. However, if you want to adjust your camera, you're going to be wanting to work on the S3D camera because this is what drives both the left and the right cameras. So if you make any, any changes you make to the S3D camera um, will be automatically updated in the left and right cameras via expression. So you can see that the left camera, every single property is expression to the right camera and then the stereo offset is added from there. So if you're only doing work on your cameras, um, you really don't need to run the update function at all. It's only when you start adding layers, removing layers, you know, changing text, changing the properties of effects on layers. That's when you need to start running the update S3D function. But for just simple camera animation, you don't even need to worry about it. You can play with that all day long and it will automatically update via expressions. Um, now, 
obviously theoretically you could link every single property of every single layer from the right comp to the left comp so it automatically updates but that will really bring your scene to a screeching halt like calculating all those expressions on every single frame so you know it's a lot cleaner and easier to just link the cameras and then if you're changing layers in the left channel just run the update function and you'll get a nice refreshed right channel comp so let's take a look at these controls there's either a parallel camera or a toe in camera by default it's set to toe in which you know they each have their advantages and disadvantages the toe in is probably a little bit easier to understand it's where the left and right cameras are tilted in a little bit like they toe in a little bit so their their center points eventually cross at the zero plane or the screen plane um, whereas a parallel system um, has a has a bit more flexibility and there's less distortion involved but it you know it can be a little trickier sometimes to deal with like the zero parallax plane although the script has a few options that make it a little bit easier to kind of control where the zero plane is when you're working with parallel cameras so the next control down is interaxial distance this is the separation between the left and right cameras so the greater this number is the more stereo depth you're going to have um, by default is set to 6.5 which is you know the average distance between human eyeballs but if you want to enhance depth of your scene, you can kind of crank this up to like really enhance how deep your scene feels. Zero parallax control, that controls where the zero plane is. Um, by default, it is linked to the focus distance of the camera. So if you go into your S3D camera, adjust your focus distance, um, your zero plane will lock to that focus point. Show zero parallax will toggle the visibility of the zero parallax locator. This is a 3D solid that's linked to the zero parallax plane. And this can be handy to, if you're positioning items in your scene and you want like an actual visual representation of where that zero plane is. If you're looking at it from like different camera angles or you want to see how things are clipping through the zero plane, this can be useful. The convergence slider, um, this is entirely controlled by expressions. This is really just a read only attribute that can sometimes be helpful to look at and other expressions reference this. By default, auto convergence is on. So if you flip switch to a parallel camera and you're using the auto convergence you know the formula and the expression will automatically adjust the sliding of the images to keep that zero plane locked um, with the zero parallax locator or the focus distance if you have them linked together or you can just turn off auto convergence and use convergence offset to make adjustments manually the main drawback with the parallel system is that you'll get these dead zones on the edges of the image as so like as you're sliding the images over each other to control where the convergence point is or the screen plane um, you'll get these black bars on the sides um, but that can be easily fixed with the scale compensation control this will allow you to just scale the whole scene up to eliminate those bars all right, so let's talk about making changes to your scene. Once you have everything set up and you actually do want to change some of your layers or add effects, like in this example, I'm just going to change what the text says. I'll change it from Stereo 3D Toolkit to Party Time. And you can notice um, on our 3D preview, it's getting all out of whack because our left channel says Party Time, our right channel says Stereo 3D Toolkit, and it's a big mess, doesn't work. So at this point, you will want to select your S3D comp in the project window and press the Update S3D button. And this will rebuild your right channel so everything matches your left channel and now we are all good again so now you can go back and make some changes to your camera don't need to update if you're making just simple changes to your camera and yeah everything stays in sync let's render a little ram preview and take a look at the updated scene all right so the next thing i'll cover is pre-compositions you know like when your scenes start getting more and more complicated you have lots of layers and all sorts of stuff going on it can be very handy to pre-compose layers to help keep things organized and easier to work with so let's take a look at how you would do that in stereo 3d let's jump into the left comp and i'm going to uh, select the text layer the light and the layer with the element plugin and turn those into a pre-composition so let's see what happens if we just make a pre-composition and reload the scene let's see uh, how that works All right, so things are looking out of sync as you would expect. Let's update the S3D and see what happens. Okay, so everything looks in sync, but we've lost all our stereo depth. And that's because 
the left and right channel are sharing the same pre-composition and we've lost our depth. So in order to fix that, all we need to do is add an underscore LF to the end of the pre-composition name. Now this will let the script know that this is a stereo pre-comp. So when we reload or hit update S3D, it will then, when it sees that name in the project, it will automatically create a matching right-hand comp and it will set up the cameras all linked to the main camera in your left channel. Just a quick look here, jumping into the right composition, you can see there's actually a warning label on screen here telling you that, hey, this is a right-hand composition, it's automatically generated by the script. If you make any changes in here, they will be lost when you run the update S3D function. And now, again, to adjust your camera from here, you don't want to adjust the one that's in the pre-composition. You can jump into your main left channel, adjust that camera, and then all the cameras in your pre-comps will automatically adjust since they are linked via expressions. So again, you just always want to do your work on the left side. Uh, if you want to make any changes to your pre-composition, do it to the left eye composition. So let's take a look at making some changes to that left pre-composition. Uh, I'm going to drop down another layer and add some particles using the trap code form plugin. Um, so you can see after I drop down that black solid, the 3D preview got all out of whack and we're only seeing the right channel that's out of date as the left channel is entirely black at the moment. So once that plugin loads, now you can see this red grid of form. So the particles only exist in the left channel. That's why they look all red in the stereo 3D preview. So I'm just going to go ahead and load a preset that I made ahead of time. It just has some sparse particles sort of floating around in space. Um, just a light touch to add a little extra depth to the scene. So there you go. There are the particles. And now all we need to do is select the main S3D comp in the project and run the update S3D function. And there you go. Everything's back in sync and our particles behave and they're actually being rendered in real 3D space, so you actually get true depth between the particles instead of just a flat plane. And again, taking a look at the right side, you can see the form particles have been added to this composition, and you have your little warning telling you not to do anything. So let's just take a look. You know, if I'm in the right comp, I adjust the particles. You can see the S3D compositions are out of whack. If I run the update function, it will actually override every, the changes I made to the right channel and snap everything to match the left. So if I want to add more particles to the scene, I need to do that in the left composition. And now when I go back to my main S3D comp and select it in the project window, update S3D, now the right eye composition will conform to the left and everything is working again. That is about everything you need to know for getting started with the Stereo 3D Toolkit. Hopefully it makes your life a little easier when it comes to working with stereoscopic content, and thank you for watching.